Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. This is the first in a series of tutorials containing tips to help you optimize your After Effects experience. In this section, I'll cover a few tips which are related to rendering. So let's say you render something out and you find a mistake. Once you fix the mistake and you want to re-render the same composition, you don't have to recreate all of the render settings. Now you probably know that you can easily duplicate layers by selecting the layer and hitting Ctrl D or Command D if you're on a Macintosh. But this also works with a render. So if you select any render queue item and then hit Ctrl D, then you get a duplicate render with all of the same settings. But there are two main differences to be aware of. The first is that there is an underscore and a number added to the name of the render. So your first duplicate will be called the name underscore one. And the next duplicate will be called the same thing but with an underscore two. Now the second main difference only happens if you had the original render settings set to the default of using the duration of the work area and then you change the work area. That's this thick gray bar right here. Maybe you wanted to preview just the small area that you fixed and forgot to change it back to the full length of the composition. Come on, we've all done it and then wondered why our render went so quickly. Anyway, just make sure that you pay attention to that. I don't want to hear sad stories of overnight renders that in the end only rendered a small portion of the project. Now, jumping back to the first difference, which is the name having an underscore. If you just want to save space by overriding obsolete versions of your video on the spot, or if you're like me and you really like to live dangerously, instead of hitting Control D to duplicate your render, you can hit Control Shift D or Command Shift D if you're on a Macintosh. And as you can see, this creates a duplicate render with exactly the same name. However, while this does give it the same name and render settings, it still doesn't solve the problem of an altered work area duration like we talked about before. So you're not entirely off the hook. Make sure that you don't forget that. Now another place where this duplication tip comes in handy is when you're asked to deliver a video with an alpha channel on videotape. Just to clarify, the alpha channel is a hidden channel in a video file or an image file that carries transparency information. Now obviously creating a video for videotape that carries transparency information is not really possible. Or is it? Well, yes and no. For the most part, videotape can only carry the three visual channels of red, green, and blue which make up all of the colors. That means the fourth channel, that's our alpha channel, can't be stored along with the RGB. Ah, but since the alpha channel is simply a channel containing grayscale values that indicate levels of transparency, and since black, white, and gray are all just different values of equal parts red, green, and blue, we can just store this information as a visible RGB video. So what does this have to do with duplicating a render, you might ask? Well, in addition to duplicating a render queue item in your render queue, you also have the ability to duplicate an output module. Now, the output module is where you keep the settings for many things, including alpha channel options. So let's go into our output module and then set up a render for videotape with no alpha channel. Make sure that your channel pulldown is set to just RGB, and also make sure that you set your color pulldown to straight, unmatted. This will keep the background color from bleeding through into partially transparent areas when we combine everything back together. But because we're using this option, on its own the RGB video will look really bad. So don't be surprised, or for that matter worried. The alpha channel render we're going to create will clean it up when it's composited. I'll eventually cover the whole straight versus pre-multiplied thing in a later tutorial, but not today. So for now you'll have to take my word for it. Anyway, once we click OK and go back to the render queue, we can select the output module and hit Control D, which duplicates that output module. And as you can see, we get another file being rendered with the same name, but with an underscore one next to it. Let's jump into the output module settings and change the channel pulldown to alpha, which as you can see also causes the color pulldown area to become grayed out, meaning we can't change it, which is good because an alpha channel is what it is and we don't want to mess with that. Anyway, click OK to confirm, and then in the render queue, you may want to change the output file name to something that indicates that this is the alpha component of the original video, just for your records. At this point, just hit render and After Effects will output both files. When it's done rendering, you can use the grayscale video version of the alpha channel as a luma mat for the RGB render to create the original transparency that you had in your After Effects composition. Now why would you be asked to put this on a videotape instead of just delivering a QuickTime on DVD or a hard drive? 
Well, there are a lot of reasons. For starters, the file may be too big for a DVD. And as far as hard drives go, delivering them can be difficult depending on how big or expensive they are. And there's always the risk of corruption of data. Having stuff on hard drive and tape is always a good option because, well, you know, two choices for an editor is always better than one. And speaking of editors, some editing systems work much faster when capturing in real time off of a Digibeta deck as compared to importing large video files, especially if they use a proprietary or hardware compression codec that takes up a lot less space and for which their systems are optimized. For their workflow, tape is a better option. Finally, archiving is another good reason to consider tape. Archiving to a hard drive alone is dangerous because the data can be corrupted or the drive can just break. Plus, you know, who wants to fill up their hard drives with data that they're not going to be using anymore? When a video is too big for a DVD, archiving to tape is a great additional backup option because you can keep long videos on a tape without the cost of any extra space. You see, a tape holding one minute of video is no bigger than a tape holding an hour of video. But when it comes to data DVDs, one minute of uncompressed video versus an hour of uncompressed video can mean the difference between one DVD and 30 DVDs. So a lot of studios still use videotape as a storage and archiving option. Anyway, I hope this helps you speed up your workflow a bit and gives you a few more options with regard to delivery and archiving. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.